am Gail Orr. I'm with the Western New York Side Saddle Chapter of the American Side Saddle Association. And this is Audrey Sears. She is a judge, instructor, and clinician also for the American Side Saddle Association. And today, we're going to actually talk about the queen, um, which isn't just Audrey in her beautiful, you know, uh, princess way. But it's basically a feature that we use to shim the rider so that they fit into the saddle a little better. So Audrey, let me just let you talk about your saddle a little bit and, and where you are right now. Well, so this is a, a 1920s Champion and Wilton side saddle. Um, it was originally made for its original owner and that original owner's horse. So I don't have uh, the same position as she did um, or the same measurements. So because of that, if I were to sit in this saddle, uh, directly or originally it puts me in a bad position it twists my hips in the wrong direction it creates kind of a top a top heavy um, purchase in the front and it gets my knee out of alignment with where my horse's spine would be so in order to fix that we have to kind of shim it up in order to get my uh, leg and my hips more square in the saddle and more directly over my horse's spine or back um, how we could shim it is lots of different things. We can, um, I do a uh, piece of fleece that's been rolled over and folded over a couple times. I lay it right inside and then I have a sock that I slip on top of it and vet wrap it into place and then do another sock. But for the purposes of this video, we'll just use one sock. <laughs> so Audrey, you used a term that I'm not sure everybody is familiar mm -hmm. with. Can you explain what purchase is? Okay, so the purchase is when your right leg or whichever leg that goes over um, the upright horn, so if you're on your offside or inside, is when your heel comes to the shin of your down leg, the leg that's underneath a leaping horn. Um, that's creating a purchase. I remember it because this is called the safe of your saddle, so you put a purchase in your safe. <laughs> but, that's how I remember it. <laughs> um, so on the queens, um, you can see a lot of different types of queens. There are ones that are made out of leather and fleece. Um, I've seen a lady use polo wraps wrapped around in order to create more padding, not only between her and the horn um, directly, but also forward in order to help keep her a little more forward into the saddle. So Audrey, how do you know exactly how much padding you should put here between your knee and the upper horn? So the best way that I can remember is you want your upright thigh to stay as straight with the horse's spine as possible and your hips to be as even and straight on the horse. So when you're riding a stride, so with one leg on either side, um, you have equal weight in your seat bones and your hips are at equal distances, not one far in front of the other or one too far back. They're straight across and balanced. And you want that same feeling when you're in the saddle as well. So if you're feeling a little off kilter or your hips are a little twisted, then you probably need a queen to help bring yourself back over. So Audrey, one of the things that I've noticed is sometimes an instructor might come up and actually put a shim right underneath your hip, between your hip and the saddle itself. Why would an instructor do that? What they're going for is even weight distribution between your right and your left hip. So not only does your right and your left hip have to be even from front and back, but they also have to be even up and down. So you want it nice, straight, and flat. That's also why when you see in a lot of side saddles, they have a nice wide and flat seat. So the next thing we thought we would show you is how to actually build a queen on your saddle. Now Audrey actually has a partial roll of vet wrap that's left over, so we thought we'd show you how to use that. And she has a piece of fleece. Yep. So I used the proper depth of my fleece. This is something that I had in an earlier lesson that we learned that that's the right depth for me. Um, in order to protect my saddle, because it is an older saddle and it's in good condition, I'd prefer to keep it that way. Um, I put my felt down, or this could be your fleece, it could be a rolled polo wrap, it could be um, a bandage left over, it could even be a rolled up piece of, of a sweatshirt or an old t-shirt or something like that. Then I use a sock, an old sock, it's washed, don't worry, it doesn't stink or anything crazy. And I slide that down over it first in order to help keep it in place. 
doesn't want to stay in place. There we go, and I tuck it all up in. And then I double check the fit. Because right now, before I cinch it down, that's where we want to make sure that it's nice and fit. So I put my feet in the stirrups, maybe. There we go. All right, I double check the fit. That looks pretty good to me. It feels really nice and even and square. So then I add my vet wrap. I'll do one or two rolls around on it because I want it to make sure that it stays tight. So you're winding it around twice or you're Yeah, doing, one okay. or two. One or two times. Kind of depends on how much stuffing is in there. And you want to pull it tight because the nice thing about vet wrap is it cinches itself down. So if you leave it really loose, then it's going to wiggle around. And this is something, especially on a jumping saddle, that we want to keep tight. All right. And then because I feel uh, I don't want my breeches getting nasty, because if you're from hotter climates like I am, this stuff melts. I put another sock on over top of it. Plus it makes it look kind of nice. Doesn't look like I got vet wrap or duct tape or anything like that up on the top of my horn. There we go. And I double check the fit one more time, make sure we're good to go. And away we go. So we want to thank you for joining us today and we hope you have a great time out there riding side saddle.